Thank you. Held in Lebanon. I'm very, very happy. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Sitting in tonight, Diane Sawyer. Good evening. After so long in captivity, they seem to be remarkably strong and spirited. One American, Thomas Sutherland, a dean at the American University in Beirut, and one man from Britain, the Anglican Church envoy, Terry Waite. They came out of Lebanon this evening and arrived in the Syrian capital, Damascus, with encouraging news about the other hostages and some details about the conditions they endured during their captivity. We begin with ABC's Jim Laurie. After more than six years in captivity, sometimes in chains, Thomas Sutherland had not lost his sense of humor. All I can say, though, about the English, they take a hell of a long time to get things done. He came to get me out of there about five years ago, and it's taken him five years to get me out, but finally he's taking me home. Terry Waite, the man who had lost his freedom in 1987 trying to gain the release of other hostages, now brought welcome news of the three remaining captive Americans. Before the end of the month, Joseph Sicipio and Helen Steen would be released. We hope within the next five days. He furthermore said that by the end of the month, Terry Anderson would be set free. Sutherland provided details of the imprisonment of Terry Anderson. Uh, he is no longer chained to the wall, thank God, but he's still in a room that has very little fresh air and no daylight whatsoever. Sutherland revealed that earlier they had been chained 24 hours a day. The guards in recent days, though, had provided better treatment. Two of the young men who were kind of the captains of the teams that alternated looking after us, one by the name of Mahmoud and one by the name of Jamil. I christened him Jamil. And uh, those two men kept their, their other workers in line, and they treated us with respect. So for Waite and Sutherland, the ordeal is over. Sutherland heads next to a family reunion at a U.S. Air Force base in Germany, wait to a hero's welcome in England. Both living proof the U.N. effort to end the hostage crisis is working. Jim Laurie, ABC News, London. Shortly after the news conference, Terry Waite left Damascus on a flight to Cyprus. After he's examined by doctors, he's expected to fly home to England tomorrow. And as Jim Laurie said, he's likely to get quite a welcome there. Here's ABC's John Lawrence. Britain gave thanks tonight for the freedom of its most admired man of the church. After almost five years, Terry Waite's name was crossed from the list of hostages with the words, thanks be to God. Britons got the good news in their homes, at work, even in the subways. Information has just been received that Terry Waite has been released from Beirut. Terry Waite's cousin John got the news from a reporter. Oh, my God. God, oh God, I've thought about this for so long, for five years. In the years before he was kidnapped, Terry Waite earned a reputation for skill and courage in negotiating the release of hostages all over the world. What are you planning to do now? But his own abduction became another Middle Eastern mystery. Islamic fundamentalists accused Wade of spying for the American government, of carrying a large sum of cash and wearing an electronic homing device when he was captured. It is known that Wade kept in close contact with Oliver North at the time that North was running the United States government's arms for hostages deal with Iran. National Security Council documents written by North show that Terry Waite was an important source of information because of his contacts with the kidnappers in Beirut. For years, it has not been known whether Waite was a knowing participant in the Arms for Hostages conspiracy or an unwitting victim. Now that he's free, he will have the opportunity to resolve the mystery. John Lawrence, ABC News, London.